I think that every woman would 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 be grateful for a man to step up. Hey, beautiful people, how you are doing today? It's your girl Destiny here, and welcome back to my channel. How you are doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So today's video is a very interesting video and guys we need to talk yes we're talking 50 50 again so this video is a video of claire franklin in an interview and he was asked about what he thinks about 50 50 relationship and his response to that question was really interesting for me it's how the interviewer was asking him the question like hey hey like oh, what do you think and claire franklin went on to talk about how him he's a traditional type of man he does not believe in 50 50 a man should provide for his woman and i find this conversation very very interesting because we've had this conversation over and over here on this channel where men are talking like oh this that like oh should we go 50 50 some men want it and some men don't anyway guys let's go hear what claire franklin said because he was dropping some some gems let's go hear what he has to say then we'll come back and talk what are your thoughts on 50 50 relationships i'm old school See, that's me. I'm old school. I'm going to pay for everything. Uh, but, hold on. If you pay for everything, are you expecting old school values in a new school woman? Because that's not how they're wired. But they can be. It's, I think that every woman would, would, would be grateful for a man to step up and take leadership mm -hmm. in the right way. The problem is the lack of love, compassion, and the lack of still having a voice in your significant other is some things, the thing that, that we as men fail at. It's because there is this authoritarian mindset that we also have that if I'm contributing and leading everything, that I contribute and lead everything. Right. But there still should be an equal voice and an opinion and view that we must consider, that we must acquiesce to at times because there's a wisdom and a knowledge that a woman brings to the table that we benefit from. And so, but a lot of that is our own insecurities, right. a lot of the ways that we were raised. What's a good place to take someone on the first date? You know, we there's this thing that's viral moment with the cheesecake factory. I saw it. And how much should one spend? I think the best place to go on the first date is to ask her where she want to go. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Why? Big end, big Why? Old. Why? Because she says, I want to go to this five-star restaurant. Well, <laughs> you already know, if you just order the water, it's $50. But what's wrong with her saying that? What's, what, what's, well, what's wrong with me saying no? <laughs> no. So, first of all, I'm trying to figure out what's the problem with that. Ain't no problem. It ain't no problem with her asking. Ain't no problem with me saying no. So now, what's the next question? Where can we why go? Are you saying, why are you saying no? Because, because here's the thing. Okay, Girl. give it to me. Why are you saying no? If I start you here, where do I go after here? That ain't necessarily true. It is. Oh, it ain't just Man, true. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Man, Pete, you know what? I got to give you youngsters game. Y'all ain't got no game. Give them. Here it is. You can say there easily. Okay, baby girl, I'm finna take you to this place you want to, but I'm finna let you know. This place is so mad expensive. I'm doing it because I want to impress you to let you know that I got you. Hold on, let me finish. I got you, but I ain't gonna be able to do this all the time and make a joke out of it, make it light, keep it cool, keep it fun. Because see, let me tell you what, let me tell you what wins a woman every time. Make it a laugh. Make a joke out of it, make it, make it light. Man, make, make it laugh. have you ever seen the ugliest dude with the prettiest chick? Yeah, Because yeah. he keep on laughing. You know Women what? love to laugh. I'm using a bit of a Girl, I ain't taking you to that place. <laughs> Cause I ain't got the money. Girl, we've been going down here this month. <laughs> Going down here to chill his Applebee's or something. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, though, Kurt. You know. It's that like, that don't it, mean that. That but, don't mean that she's going to want that every time. Exactly. That, it, it don't. That, we not wired like that. You know, once you once you get to once you get established at a level. Now, if you'd have got a let's just say for the sake of argument, in 1993, your first car is a Rolls Royce. Uh huh. You're not going back down. You're not lowering that going down from that. You but, moving up. But but what I'm saying, first of all, I'm not Stephen A. And so I'm I'm I'm, I'm only going to give you so much. <laughs> I'm saying to you that. <laughs> now, now you I'm need that. Now you on the cop. And then first of all, let me also say this. Let me also say this. Is I think that if you are taking a girl out and a girl is going out with a guy, that there's not even a relationship to be able to laugh and play with it, even in the process. Y'all ain't the ones for each other anyway, because the best relationship that's going to make it yeah. are the ones that are friends. Oh, okay. 
So what's the first question? So what's the first question I should ask on a date then? The problem is, is men, we're so enamored by the physical nature of a woman that we don't even start asking nothing else. We're just looking at the we're looking at the breast, we're looking at her neck, we're looking at her feet, we're looking at her... Nah, I ain't looking at no feet. Nah, ain't nobody looking at no feet. You ain't looking at feet? It's I'm looking at feet. <laughs> I'm looking at feet. So do you go on a date to get married? I don't believe in that as much as I know that a lot of Christians push that narrative. It's I don't see... See, it's I don't believe that marriage has to be the sum total of a person's existence. Mm. I don't believe that. That's the, that seems to be the, the overwhelming... Yeah, now. and I think it's unfortunate. It's because, first of all, by the sheer numbers, there's going to be many, many beautiful women that will never get married just on the sheer numbers. There's more women mm -hmm. than men. Right. So if we make humans feel like that, 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 that your sum total of purpose and existence is in the space of a marriage, then we fail all of the beautiful people that, 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 that will be single, that are single, right. that God can't use them, that there's no purpose for their life and that, that there's no plan and that they can't live fulfilled lives. Right. So you can be able to date and still put parameters on if you want to be active or not, how much you want to give of yourself so you can be able to still enjoy beautiful relationships and it doesn't mean that you got to be walking out of your mind marriage 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 right. is because not getting married is not a sin oh okay it ain't a sin right and so we got to stop making everything black and white marriage is not on the same level as salvation it ain't and so you got to be able to have friends with people and you can be able to establish the boundaries of what the friendship needs to look like, how far it needs to go before it crosses over. And, and if something beautiful turns out of that, that turns into a marriage, it's a beautiful thing. Right. Marriage can be a beautiful thing, but it's not the sum total of a person's existence. But let me ask you a question. This open marriage, can a, ma can a marriage survive with openness? It's, I don't know why a person would want to be married then. Just don't be married. Yeah. Just don't be married. Just, 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 just be, just be other. Be something other. And, you know, like, like I said, I think that the social constructs we form, it's almost like what, it's almost like our generation, uh, uh, Shan. If you are a 30 year old woman, even to this now, if, if, if you are a 30 year old woman still single and you go to a family union, all the old ladies are going to pressure you. Why, why, girl, why you ain't married? Where your man? Where your husband? All of these social constructs that we put the pressure yeah. on people for things that they may not be ready for. Right. And that does not make them wrong. Right. That just makes them not you. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about everything Clara Franklin said in this video. For me, like I said, I told you guys he was dropping some gems. And I really like this conversation. And this has struck a bigger conversation, people talking and giving their opinion on this. I have a lot to say, but I really love this conversation. He's talking about how marriage does not define someone. Everything. I'm coming back to share my talk. But you please go down in the comment section and share your own talk. Love to know what you think about everything he said. But please keep it respectful. With that all said, let's go check other people's thoughts on this. Then I'll come back and share my own tut. This date is to ask her where she want to go. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, please go back and watch that video because, first of all, Kirk Franklin, he's my favorite gospel artist of all time. But nonetheless, he's also spitting in this video. And initially, like when I was going to make this video, I was going, I was like, when I was stitching this video, I was like, I kind of just miss when Shannon Sharp was just talking about sports, like, because we didn't get to know this part of him intimately. Um, but, you know, after, like, watching the full video and whatnot, I kind of feel a little bit sad for him. And let me let me tell you why. So, Shannon Sharp was on a, he was, he was on an interview... I don't know, maybe like a year or so ago, and he was talking, they were talking about like relationships and stuff like that. And he was like, you know, the main reason why he's single right now at this, at his older age is because he put so much focus into his football career that he never took the time to like make sure that he was also focusing on, you know, whoever he was dating. Like he never took it seriously enough to the point where he would have ended up married you know like football always came first for him right and so and thinking about that and watching this clip and even like just like watching like and looking at like it rather hearing all of like the questions that he's asking I think he's immature in a sense of dating entirely right because he's like genuinely asking certain questions that you're like you should know this at 
what 60 something years old like you should know this so why so why are you so strongly like his his viewpoints on like dating and stuff like that it very much is giving man in his 20s and i'm like shannon you you a grown ass man who's like had a hip surgery bro like you know what i'm saying like you're 60 something years old so why do you think like this and i truly think that you know outside of you know him maturing as a man completely you know physically i don't think he matured emotionally enough to like date seriously enough so that he could get married and i feel kind of i feel sad i, I feel i feel sad for him in a sense you know shannon sharp is a very attractive man but you know him doing this podcast now you know we, we're all like learning about him in another way it's like oh my god like is these are these your viewpoints man <laughs> and, he, and it kind of sucks so but now that i in my head i put it that way i just i feel i feel sad for the man i'm like damn like you think like a 20 20 something maybe 30 something or early 30 something year old man and that's that's really horrible and i and i hate that i really really hate that for him but I don't know. What do y'all think? Am I am I just spitballing here and I'm just making making up shit for him? Or do you guys agree? Let's let's have a little conversation. <laughs> the best place to go on the first date is to ask her where she wanna go. Oh no. Okay, I just want to take a second and acknowledge what went wrong in that video. Shannon Sharp is like a unk figure within his community, the black community, the sports communities, for lots and lots of people, especially men. And to be really real with you, a more positive discussion could have been fostered in that clip. And it wasn't. And I'm going to tell you what I mean. There Shannon is pitching this like paranoid, deeply suspicious approach to dating and romance. And he's almost even kind of coming across as if he's like implying that women are these um, massively money hungry, salacious, one dimensional characters that you've got to, you know, treat with a firm hand and keep one eye open with. It's paranoid. And to be really real with you, love and like family, it doesn't grow in deep seated suspicion and blanket statements. Now, let me tell you what Shannon Sharp could have done because I really think that he really just wants to protect men. He probably grew up in a scenario as a young black man with money where he was being preyed upon and I think he's trying to be helpful. However, the way he's pitching it is feeding into suspicion. And our poor guy, Kirk Franklin, was trying to steer it in a better direction. But Shannon Sharp just wasn't asking questions about it, wasn't trying to elaborate, wasn't trying to go in the direction that Franklin was. And um, it was a missed opportunity. Men are able to protect themselves when they have firm boundaries for themselves, which is something that we all should have when we're dating while also still fostering loving and nurturing relationships with the right person. Now, what Shannon could have done is talked about how to empower men um, to have boundaries, to say no when they're uncomfortable, what it looks like to move on when a person is crossing your boundaries, and how to be clear about what your limits are um, for yourself. And at one point, if you watch the whole video, Kirk Franklin actually even tried to talk a little bit about what boundaries look like when dating and how to say, ah, this is as far as I can go with things. But Shannon didn't ask any further questions and the topic fizzled out. And all in all, I really just feel like the discussion could have gone so much deeper and it could have been discussed in a way that does talk about protecting men and encouraging men to have boundaries for themselves in a way that is loving and nurturing and not so suspicious and looking over your shoulder and wondering who's trying to um take advantage of you that's not how love grows and i could go a lot deeper on this uh but for the sake of time shannon's approach wasn't adequate and um he really wasted kirk franklin's time hopefully some people heard a few of the things that franklin was saying and was able to pick up on that mm -hmm. but you could just tell Shannon was not trying to understand, listen, or grow. And uh, it took me a couple of tries to even get through the video. What are your thoughts on 50-50 relationship? Man to step up and take leadership in the right way. The hey, Cousin Carl here. Nah, 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 nah. Guys, this is straight up simp talk. You see... Men want to always talk about what men's responsibility is. But the problem in today's modern woman is feminism. 
That's how we got to 50-50. All of these women wanted to get their own bag and do their own thing and write their own program. And then they want to turn right around and say, well, it's the man's fault. And see, men don't have that option. You're either a man or you're not. Nobody wants to talk about what a good woman is. And see, a good woman is a follower because men are supposed to lead. And women, that means you're supposed to follow if you're a good woman. That's why you date her. Don't get married. I think that every woman would, would, would be. I almost skipped this video because the, it was just so childish. And I was thinking to myself, like, why, why are you at your big age asking these questions to Kirk Franklin of all people? You know what I'm saying? And then I listened to the whole thing. And when I tell you Kirk is just so beyond his year well i mean he old so i guess he not he like right where he should be but when i tell you oh i was like there we go there we go there we go like man he was eating those questions eating them and answering them as they should be answered shouldn't have been asked in the first place because why are you asking about 50 50 relationships with a man that's been married for like over 20 years even 30 years i don't know and before you come into my comment section saying some bullshit like oh he's a cheater he cheated on that girl let me tell you something let me tell you something. You might think that Kurt Franklin don't know nothing about women to be talking about relationships and this, that, and the third. But how did you find out that Kurt Franklin was a cheater? How did you find out? You found out that he was a cheater because he told on himself. Mm -hmm. Not because a woman came out the woodwork and said, Kurt Franklin and me was doing this, that, and the mm -hmm. He knows how to keep a woman happy. He knows how to keep a woman happy enough to shut the fuck up. Eep. That was such a bad take. But... <laughs> Man, I want to go to this five-star restaurant where you already know if you just order the water. It Men so choose the wrong woman all the time, and then want to blame that woman for them choosing the wrong woman. Y'all always choose the woman that won't stuff like that. Y'all never choose the women that actually like y'all. That's because y'all try to see how much she really like you. Just get the woman that you want that fit in your pay grade and call it a day. Y'all also think women don't deserve nice things, especially black women, but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. What are your thoughts on 50-50 relationship? Completely against 50-50. That's just dumb. Like, why would I want to chip in when I can have a woman that will pay for everything? Anyway, because the best relationship that's going to make it yeah. are the ones that are friends. Oh, okay. I need to finish watching the video. Why at your big... <laughs> Why at your big age is it shocking and like a revelation that the best relationships are the ones that last? A friendship is the base. Why? It makes sense. Y'all don't even got the groundwork deal. Y'all worried about alpha males and 50 50. You don't even know that what was what is to Jesus take the wheel. What are your thoughts on 50 50 relationships? I'm old school. See, that's me. I'm Today's a new day. And there is no sunshine. Listen, Kirk Franklin is a man. Kirk Franklin is an example of a man. At least the type of man that I want. A real man. That's the only that's the only kind of real man. Other than my husband. That's the only kind of man that I've heard speak music to my ears. Y'all need to listen to Kirk. And the person that is interviewing him, he is too old. He's too old to be thinking like that, but it's okay because there's men like Kirk, Franklin, real men, okay? Not the finances. Girls want someone to make them laugh. Girls, they don't always want expensive. You can be honest. You can take me on a date, on an expensive date, and then we go to McDonald's for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. That's not the point, but the whole video. What are your thoughts on 50-50 relationships? I'm old school. See, that's me. I'm and listen, I'm I'm old school too, man. I like I don't mind every female that I have been with unless they want to pay for something. Cool. And even then, I'm gonna argue your ass down for that shit. Like, oh, baby, no, nah, man, let me pay for that. I got it. Or whatever the case. Or it's just what's understood is understood. Like, I don't even say shit. I got it. Like, it's cool, you know. Now, my thing is nowadays, all y'all stupid ass females in these comments. Don't have anything to offer but what's in between y'all legs, G. Can't even cook. Don't got no emotional support for the man. That's one of the biggest things. A man won't ask for nothing but just be there. Just support. That's all. Can't even do that. But y'all want a Chanel Birkin 
and go to, I don't know, have some Wagyu, Wagyu, whatever, that type of steak and shit. Like, what? And it's crazy. Most men don't even mind that. But it's like, what's in it for me? It's like, I'm just, it's like we just paying for pussy, bro. And I don't like that. Like, just, it's like soft prostitution, bro. Extremely soft prostitution because y'all both conscious and aware. Oh, oh, I, I fuck with you. Or I'm trying to get to know you. But then that's like, it's always, it's just, that's what it is. It stops there. The genuineness, the genuineness stops there, bro. Like the, the, the authentic vibe that once was is gone. Because as soon as you present something else to them, like, hey, This is how it's going to be, or I think we should do this now, or let's try. It's going to be hell. Nowadays, because of social media, that's another component to the downfall of genuine relationships, you know, uh, organic ass love and shit. Social media, y'all see girls that's in a whole different text bracket, first of all, than I guess the average woman, but now the average woman wants astronomical shit now. Everybody is entitled to having great things, men or women. I want everybody to be happy, period, bro. I don't care who you are. Everybody deserves happiness, but these comments. But Kirk, oh, my God. Bro, y'all, if he said if he said anything leaning towards y'all ideologies and terminologies, bro, y'all would just be okay with it. And that's what I don't like. Like, I haven't seen. It was a couple of females. That's why they say everybody, every man isn't bad, every woman isn't bad. I've seen some women being very logical in the comments, and I'm about that bro but uh, but the majority in the mass of women just want to just do what i'm doing right now while the man is just i mean paying for shit. The, the, the female is just sitting there you're just a body you're literally just a body taking up space in this man's life if i have to bring the table the food and everything else to, like you know what i'm saying like to the table like bring the table to the table with everything <laughs> like what the what can you, what, what can I benefit from you? I don't want anything from you, but what can I benefit from you? If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you elevate me? I don't need your, shorty, I don't want your money. What can you give me with, with, within, that's from the inside? You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about pussy. Pussy is everywhere, man. Like, nobody care about that shit. If you, if, if you still care about just getting ass, yeah, he's a bad guy, bro. But if you can't. Give this man who's not even asking for that shit and don't even really speak up on it unless y'all talking about some freaky. The nigga just like really just there. He's there for you. He's doing this, holding doors, buying you that. Bro, what are you going to do for that man? This shit is so fucking. This is a day old age ass fucking conversation. I mean, man, it just bugs me. Like the majority of females, G, actually just want to get taken care of and and. Which is cool. But again, but get taken care of like like bro, a job exists. You can get a job. You know, you can you can become a strong independent woman yourself, no matter the race, no matter the it don't matter bro, you can become that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because today you you want a man to be that. You want a man to have everything. You want a man to have it together. Mentally, emotionally, psychologically, socially, fucking I don't know. All type of physically, like you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Like, us men need to have standards for 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 the type of women we we like to talk to, honestly, bro. You know, and it's not oh, we'll go date a broke bitch. I'm gonna date a, a female, a queen, who knows how to cater to me. I don't need, I don't need your money. I need your time and love. But y'all don't know how to give that nowadays. Most of y'all like. 83% of females, I would say. And that, uh... What the fuck is that? 23%, 27 whatever the fuck the case may be. <laughs> My math's terrible. <laughs> Point is, that's a 23 or 27%. That fucking percentage is small, bro. But, hey. Everybody can't be great. Like, every man ain't gonna be great. But to find that, you, you gotta hold on to it. Because it's rare. Because it's a lot of greedy motherfuckers out here, bro. It is. And it's a lot of men. It's a lot of men that be doing that to females, too. Like, that's a lame-ass, bum-ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? On some real shit. Y'all And y'all niggas, my kings, get your shit together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Get your shit together so you can. One day when the right female come along, you can spoil her and take her to these five-star restaurants. Because the majority of these females don't deserve that shit. 
Because once you can't do that for her, she's just going to go to somebody else. Oh, damn. So she didn't really deserve it in the first place. Come on, cut it out. Please go down in the comment section and share it. I'd love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section. But please keep it respectful. You're on the channel. We're allowed to disagree, but we'll do it in a respectful way, okay? I have a lot to say, especially what does it like. For me, like what he was talking like, talking about, oh, what does a woman bring to the table? Like, you've not heard we are the table. And this is why, like, even though we keep having this conversation over and over again, these men, some of these men still don't listen. Some listen, some still don't listen. And I don't know how we're going to get into their head. If the only thing you're bringing into the table is money, which he has pointed out, yeah, then it takes more than that to keep a relationship. There's emotional, mental, spiritual. So are you emotionally available? Are you there? Because they keep, you just want a woman that's going to cater for you. What else are you doing for her apart from buying her Birkins or taking her to fancy restaurant? What else are you doing apart from your money? And this is why I don't get it. Where you hear somebody that's been married for 20 years, giving you a relationship advice, giving you relationship tips, and yet you want to fight and you want to tussle. Like, no, 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 no. It doesn't work. Like, okay, are you married that long? Were you able to keep a woman that long? Then listen to him. Like you guys know, you're on this channel. We, we have amazing conversation. I'm not saying, and this is why we have a lot of relationships that are failing is because men like this just feel like the only thing they can bring to the table is money. And when men like Crow Franklin that has the money is telling you that it takes more than money, they still not listen. When we women tell them it takes more than money to keep, make a relationship, they still don't listen. And that's why I keep telling ladies, ladies, do your work. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Be in a healthy relationship with yourself so that you can attract and you can set solid boundaries. If you're new year, I've been married for 10 years, been together with my husband for 20 years. I agree with what Claire Franklin said that one of the things that keeps a relationship is friendship because love will walk out of the door. Both of you will get on each other's nerves. Finance will come and play at and get into your children. But if you have that friendship, it doesn't matter who, whether it's 50-50, both of you are balancing each other out. Both of you are, are pulling the weight for each other. Both of you are holding each other accountable. And he understands that he, as the man, he's supposed to be a provider. And they keep saying, like, if you're not a provider and a protector in terms of mentally, spiritual, then, then, what, then what am I doing with you? Because research and even discussing about it, we know that we women, apart from finance, we put more of the mental, emotional, spiritual work into the relationship than the man. The man may bring here and there, but we do. Another thing I also want to say is that what some of these men don't know that why we women put our words up and are we're very defensive or very like uh, 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 I know that in a relationship that's because we don't trust you you probably have not been able to build that relationship or that friendship for the woman to trust you to lead when we've seen the madness that's going on out there that would you not want me to live my life in your hand then you not lead me we've seen how men just leave women in the desert thirsty and if you as a woman, you can learn from other women sharing their story and keep your guards up. A woman will follow you because that man was talking about, oh, women are meant to be leaders. If you're giving the woman, protect, providing everything for the woman, is the woman ready to be a follower and all that? If you can end that woman's trust and let that woman know, you know, I got you 100%. I'm here 100% with you. We're going to do this work together. I bet you, you have females that is going to be there to be the follower and just let you lead. And, be, and frankly, I actually said it. You may just think, oh, it's the whole masculine lead, 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 lead. You want to be the leader, leader, leader. He takes more than that. In terms of advice, go and ask. This is a man married for 20 years telling you. Your wife will give you the best advice and guidance. And I don't know how that thing works. Like, and I have friends that will have this conversation most men that don't listen to their wife, it doesn't end well for them. It is. When I mean end well, I'm not saying any, like, usually those things that they don't listen to, the wife want them against it or something like. So we just need to, like, come on. Mm -mm. Okay? Listen. When the people that have done it are telling you how to keep it, and marriage is not the ultimate, and I agree with that. Marriage is not the ultimate. It's, still, it's not the ultimate. And I've had this conversation here already on my channel before. Marriage is not the ultimate. And that's the way it has been made in my society, that marriage is the ultimate, especially for women. It is not learn how to love yourself. Know yourself. 
embrace yourself, heal your trauma so that you can be there for yourself, so that you can keep, like, stay on business with yourself. Put yourself first. Keep your boundaries there. Okay, ladies? Anyway, guys, please go down in the comment section and share it. I'd love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section. I can go on and on on this. But please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Smash the like button. Okay, because that helps you to, to push out my content for more people to see. Go ahead and share this video with somebody that you want to be part of the conversation. Because that's what we do here. We have banging conversation. So go ahead and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Do